there's free running, there's no load, there's running with a load, and then there's dead stalled, at which point the motor basically whips the uh, pendulum around. This is pushing pretty hard against my fingers right now, actually, and it's still working the clutches a little bit, so there's a fair amount of torque coming out of it. But you can't actually stall the motor in this, um, partially because it's Lego and the clutches would slip. But uh, there it is, back to free. Locked. Well, as close to locked as I can get it. Free. Also, uh, there's very little method to my madness here. I didn't you know, do any measurements on these or figure out any, you know, formulas or anything. Um, I know there's a lot of math to it. Constantinesco was real into um, harmonics, and that was kind of where this came from. But, um, you yeah, know, the only thing I really tried to do was to make sure that when that was straight, that was, or the uh, link to the clutches was straight, and the link to the motor back here is about in the middle. And really I could have hooked this direct to the motor, I just didn't for whatever reason. Um, and it helps to clear that, which is just a design oversight on my part. It doesn't need to be there, it should end there. Alright, so now for a more practical demonstration. I've just got a string here hooked up to a wheel hub. This is just so it can fall off. And at the bottom of it, I have this old glue bottle not terribly heavy, but, you know, what do you expect from a Lego motor? Especially when it's pushing all this crap. So, it's going to take it a second to work out the slack. You'll see this not moving much during that time, and then when it starts to pick up the thing, the glue bottle, for real, you'll see this swaying back and forth a little. So. just ran out of slack. Alright, and there it is. You can see it's stalled out back here because it got stuck on the rail, but it didn't stall the motor, that just swung more. Uh, so the concept for this came from a guy named George Constantinesco, uh, who designed it in 1927, or put it into use in 27, or something like that. Um, there's a decent write-up about it on Wikipedia. I looked through that. Um, there's some pictures that I was able to cobble this together from. His design looks a lot more legit. He's got some really nice one-way clutches. I don't know if they're his design or if he lifted it from something, but you know, anyway, I can't even describe it. It's just really basic and good. But um, he built them to put into little runabout cars that he was building for. Uh, I think it was dri just driving around Italy, like selling to people to drive around Italy, not just, you know, we I'm going to go drive for fun. But he was designing these cars, and he needed a transmission that would work well with a low horsepower engine, so these things only had like a five horse motor on them. And uh, they got by with the low horsepower motor, because on, okay, say you've got like a five speed or something, you know, you've got your five speed, you got your nice engine mated to your five speed, you start it up, you put it in first gear, and then you have to fudge it with the clutch to get it to first, you know, to the butter zone of first where the engine is directly connected through the clutch, and it's at a good ratio to the wheels, and then it passes that pretty quick, and then you're revving it higher than it is doing well at in first to get it 
fast enough to drop it into second, and then it, either it's bogging into the good part of second, or you're clutching it into the good part of second, and then it goes above the good part, and then you know, you're in the third, and it's just kind of a clunky system, and it requires a lot out of your engine. Now, if you have, and, that, and that's because a standard transmission just has these set gear ratios. A continuously variable transmission, or, you know, a torque converter, has no set gear ratios. So, if you've got it calibrated right, basically every part of it is a butter zone, so to speak. And my whole transmission is made of butter. But, you know, so you start up and basically you put it in drive, or if you're Charlie Sheen, you put it in go, and then you hit the gas, and then it automatically, you know, without any computers or anything, just mechanically shifts way down, and then gets it going, and then as you accelerate, it just kind of goes slowly dials itself up in ratio, so you get whatever ratio you need, and that way you don't need as big of an engine, because a larger engine, you need a larger engine to compensate for bad matchups in the drivetrain. If you've got a very well matched drivetrain, you don't need as many horses. Which means, you know, you can use a smaller engine, you can get better fuel economy, it doesn't weigh as much, or if you like driving fast, um, you can put it in the place of a standard transmission and you'll get better acceleration, better top speed, um, probably more fun unless you really like shifting. Um, but yeah, you know, there's no engine braking, so it would be definitely a learning curve. And uh, I don't know. Constantinesco's cars never really caught on. Um, the design went into some Romanian trains, I guess, uh, where it worked tolerably well. What I, from what I've read about the cars, they were pretty nice. They, uh, you know, they weren't terribly quick, but they could haul like crazy. Apparently, he hooked one up to a like a five-ton truck and just randomly pulled it up a hill just for a demonstration. Uh, put blocks in front of the wheels and it just kind of easily lifted up and over. Whereas in a clutch car, you know, you'd be feathering the clutch and trying not to stall it, trying to give it just enough to rock it over, and meanwhile your clutch is heating up. Or in an automatic, you'd be relying on the fluid torque converter, which, you know, is similar-ish to this, except that, you know, it's basically just a fluid coupling but not. And they're not terribly efficient. They tend to heat up and heat is not good for transmission fluid, which is why you need a transmission cooler and then you're adding more stuff. But yeah, it just popped right up and over. And uh, you know, I'm still researching and trying to figure out if I can actually build one of these properly. Uh, if I did, I'd probably put the prototype on a bike, you know, just for giggles and shits, just to see if I could. Um, ultimately, you know, it'd be real fun to put in a car, but that's way ahead of me at this point. And I'll probably find some other thing to fixate on before then. But anyway, for now, this has been a fun build, and um, I'll probably improve on it a bit. And if I do, I will let you know. So uh, let me know what you think, or if you think I'm totally bats, or whatever. And uh, thanks for watching.